السلام علیکم السلام علیکم جی ہاشم کین یو لسن ٹو می یس 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 وعلیکم السلام ہائے السلام اوکے کیا حال ہے ائی ایم نیو ٹو اور حاصل الحمدللہ ٹھیک تھا ٹوڈے سر رائٹ ناؤ میں ابھی بکس ڈاؤن لوڈ کر رہا تھا پی ایم آئی سے اوکے تو وہ جو آپ نے بتائی تھی ایک تو اسٹینڈرڈ او پی ایم بینیفٹ ریئلائزیشن اور پمپاک گائیڈ لیکسیکون اور کون سی تھی سر اسٹینڈرڈ پڑے ہوئے نا سارے آل دا اسٹینڈرڈ آر دیئر یو کین ڈاؤن لوڈ دیم یو کین یو نو گو ٹو دا ناٹ دا بک اسٹور بٹ پی ایم آئی اسٹینڈرڈ ہاں وہ فری 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 ڈاؤن لوڈ یس وہ تو ہے لائک آئی ہیو این اکاؤنٹ سو آئی ایم ایبل ٹو ڈاؤن لوڈ آل اف دیم جی جی تو اسٹینڈرڈ فار پروگرام مینجمنٹ ہاں جی اسٹینڈرڈ فار پروگرام مینجمنٹ اسٹینڈرڈ فار پورٹ فولیو مینجمنٹ پی ایم بی او کے او پی ایم بینیفٹ ریئلائزیشن او پی ایم جی ہاں وہ پہلی والی پریزنٹیشن دیکھیں نا یو ول فائنڈ ایوری تھنگ دیر جی 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 اوکے اوکے ہاں ہاں اور یو شال امید سلام سر آئی ایم فائن سر سوری سر لیٹ نو پرابلم نو پرابلم اوکے آر وی آل سیٹ ٹو اسٹارٹ نیکسٹ چیپٹر Yes, sir, we can start. Now, like the Hilal. Why, sir? Why, sir? Okay. Uh, so, uh, previous class, we finished the chapter number one. Uh, that, that was the introduction of standard of program management. But you see, we had studied a lot in that. It was not only the introduction of program and pro program uh, pro program and program management, but it it had taught us a lot many things. We talked about various relationships between projects, programs, portfolios, and then we talked about the program management office. We talked about uh, the business value, then uh, individually the difference between a program, manage, program management and project management, pro then program management and portfolio management, and things like that. So I think that was quite uh, a detailed discussion, and that had put us on the right path. Now, this chapter, Performance Domains, which we are going to start now, it is going to move us towards the performance domains. I mean, we will be introduced to the various performance domains, the five performance domains. <coughs> and later, we will deal with each performance domain in a separate chapter, just like we used to do with different knowledge areas. So, uh, he was right in saying, um, Hashim probably said that, He was right in saying that this is just like the knowledge areas which we used to have in PMB, okay? But although we don't call them knowledge areas, but they are the performance domains. So these performance domains are five separate chapters after this chapter. Okay, so uh, chapter number two is broad program management performance domains. And you can see all of these five uh, performance domains are listed here in front of you. First uh, domain would be the pro program management performance uh, domain. Uh, first of all, the definition of the performance domain, then the performance domain interactions, then organizational strategy, portfolio management and program management linkages, program and portfolio distinction, and program and project distinction, in which we will talk about uncertainty, managing uh, change and complexity. Sorry, this uh, uh, content does not include uh, the various performance domains, but this uh, just describes those performance domains. So in 2.1, they will be defined. So what are these domains? Program management performance domains are complementary grouping of related areas of activity, just like in PMB, okay, we had uh, uh, knowledge areas. So these are the related areas of activity, concern, or function that uniquely characterize and differentiate the activities found in one performance domain from the other within the full scope of program management work. Program managers actively carry out the work within multiple program management performance domains during all program management phases. So while program life cycle is going on, you are simultaneously working on all of these five domains. Simultaneously, you know, at, at, uh, uh, on one side, you are working on the benefit management cycle, and then you're also exercising the governance, program governance, and so on and so forth while the program life cycle is going on so they are uh, they are in parallel to each other so th these are the
the various five domains. The center at the heart of it is the program life cycle management and around it you can see the program strategy alignment. This is a job which is to be done continuously right from the beginning of the program where, where for the first time you are going to be aligning the strategy uh, uh, with the uh, program with the strat uh, organizational strategy program strategy with the organizational strategy. This will become your continuous responsibility to keep checking this alignment and as and when your program goes out of alignment, you have to fix it. So this is one continuous duty uh, du uh, during the whole life cycle. Then you also would be doing the program governance. You, you should be uh, ensuring that whatever are the program governance guidelines provided to you are uh, regulations, rules and regulations given to you. You have to explicitly comply with them because these are not optional. Program governance is not optional. And this program governor is actually going to be uh, the seed for developing your program management plan. Your program management plan must comply 100% with the instructions given in the program governance, with the rules and regulations provided in the program governance, because program governance is basically representative of the organizational governance. So this is like of the the law, and you have to follow this law. Then. Program stakeholder engagement. We, we talked a little bit about stakeholders earlier uh, and a lot in project management. We talk about uh, a lot about the stakeholders. So here also stakeholders are extremely important, but the level of stakeholders are different. Although you may encounter the same kind of stakeholders, but at the same time, the level uh, of stakeholders is a, a bit higher. We are talking about the program level stakeholders. You may also have to sometimes interact with the project level stakeholders or even higher level stakeholders, but uh, basically you are responsible as a program manager for program stakeholder engagement and this is also going to be a continuous effort. Then is the benefit management. As you remember uh, the diagram we had seen earlier, we said as soon as the first component of the program finishes, the benefit starts yielding of that specific project or component and the benefit management work it starts right there then till the last program is last component is started the benefit is going on right so you are continuously doing the pro benefit program benefit management and when the last program benefit has started that is the point where you start unifying and consolidating the benefits and prepare for the transition. As soon as that is done, we will do the transition and we will also develop a sustainment plan to be given to the client as if they can continue reaping results, reaping benefits out of the uh, output we are, give, uh, we are going to hand them over. Okay, defining these uh, domains organizations initiate programs to deliver benefits naturally and accomplish agreed upon objectives that is exactly what is the purpose of a program program is always there to deliver benefit program is never there to deliver product service or result because product service and result is not, not the subject of program management that is the subject of project management right so program whenever we talk about program programs are initiated for delivering benefits focus is on benefit we are not really concerned about the deliverables if there are deliverables coming out from the project within the program those deliverables will have to be further you know uh, we have to uh, convert the output of those deliverables into benefits and then consolidate that that for the benefit of the overall program and the second thing is we have been given certain strategic objectives and we have to fulfill them through provision of our delivery of those benefits our realization of those benefits that often affect the entire organization actually is a organization level strategy so it will impact the organization the organization implementing the program considers and balances the degree of need change stakeholder expectations requirements resources and timing conflicts 
across the component project. We will have a number of projects are the components within a program and we have to balance them out in a very intelligent manner. <clears throat> in other words, I can I can say you have to prioritize them. You have to prioritize your components within the program. <clears throat> and how would you balance them looking at these points? <clears throat> which is more, more, more important, but the degree of need. Where change, change is most prominent? What are the stakeholder expectations? What are the requirements? What are the resources? Which is the component which is most resource hungry might uh, might not be given the priority. We may be we may like to go for another component which is not eating up a lot of resources. Then then we will see the timing conflict. Just like we had the critical path, so we will also have a critical path kind of a thing here. And if there is a the timing conflict, we will go for the critical. Uh, line uh, critical uh, path within the program management. So we have to look <coughs> into all these aspects <coughs> in orchestrating our program components. Programs introduce change throughout their duration. You see, as we know that project program and portfolio basically this is a subject of change management in the organization so they drive change and as far as the programs are concerned it is composed of a number of projects and every project has its own mission to bring certain kind of change and those changes put together would form the program chain so program is going to happen throughout the life of the uh, uh, change is going to happen throughout the life of the program also this change may be reflected in the introduction of a new product service or organization capability that is by uh, you know uh, conduct of various components or projects within the program we will receive certain you know product service or result or any organizational capability that will keep coming during the program those changes may be introduced to a variety of business processes for example the processes required to provide a new or improved service through the actions, guidance, and leadership of the program manager working within the five program management performance domains. I will once again emphasize that although the components of the program will and may yield the deliverables, naturally they are supposed to yield the deliverable, that is the product service or result, but the scope of the program is not about the deliverable, it is about the benefit realization. And also, each program each project we are running within the program is naturally we are targeting it for some product service or result but there is a definite benefit coming out of it at some stage though it may not be the responsibility of that specific project to realize that benefit then program management is going to take over that responsibility taking over that product service or result and converting it into the benefit of the project and once that is realized then the, it is going to consolidate all the benefits coming out of various projects into the overall benefit of the program. Together, these performance domains comprise the program management framework and are critical to the success of program. So all of these five domains put together, we call them the program management framework. And do, what do we have? We have strategy alignment, we have benefit management, we have stakeholder engagement, we have program governance, and we have program life cycle management so all of these things happening in parallel will make the program work first of all program strategy alignment it identifies program outputs and outcomes to provide benefits aligned with organizational goals and objectives identifies opportunities and benefits to achieve organizational strategic objectives through program implementation what has happened is that organization had had a direction they had a vision mission and overall overall strategy out of that overall strategy they had uh, many strategies to achieve very various organizational strategies had to be achieved under the organization and one of those strategies has been assigned to program manager and he is tasked to reap 
certain benefits out of it right now program is responsible for ensuring that it does reach uh, reap that specific benefit and fulfill that organizational strategic objective so it identifies the program outputs and outcomes meaning uh, what is going to come out of the program that is what are the benefits benefit what are the specific benefits realized moreover also what are the components of the project and what they will be yielding right that could be product service or result and naturally their outcomes so once again if i explain output is the deliverable and that is usually associated with the project this deliverable could be in form of product service or result but the uh, once this deliverable is delivered there is a short term benefit which could be a part of the project that maybe you have to provide a turnkey solution and naturally it is not only the solution i have to hand over it hand it over to the client in working order or maybe i have to it is part of the project to uh, give certain level of maintenance so that kind of outcome is included alongside the output though this is a kind of a benefit but this is a short term benefit so as far as outcomes are concerned they are usually within the domain of the project outputs and outcomes so these outputs and outcomes not only they are being handed over the, to the program but it has to first of all reap benefits out of these outputs and outcomes convert them into benefit realization and then justify that they are aligned with the organization goals and objectives thus identifying which are the overall benefits we, we are going to be realizing and giving to the organization so thus we achieve the organizational strategic objectives through the implementation of our program as far as benefits management is concerned first we have to define we have to come up with our benefits management plan what are the benefits which are going to come out of this program how to create those benefits how to optimize and maximize those benefits how to deliver and when to deliver them and how to sustain them so this all is story which is part of the benefits management so in other words the transitioning of the benefits and sustainment plan of the benefits you know benefit management plan benefit implement uh, realization plan and uh, the sustainment management plan transition transition and consolidation of all the benefits all of these things are actually part of the program benefit management so defining creating maximizing delivering and sustaining the benefits provided by the program this is the responsibility of program management uh, program management uh, benefits management <clears throat> then we have the program stakeholder engagement this is capturing and understanding the stakeholder just like we used to do in project management stakeholder is very important whether it is in project or a program but naturally the level is different capturing and understanding the stakeholders needs desires and expectations and then analyzing the impact of the program on stakeholders what is program going to how is program going to impact the stakeholder this impact would it be according to the needs desires and expectations of the stakeholder or not if not then there are two things to be done either the stakeholder has to be pre-warned that his expectations are wrong and he would be impacted in a different way by this program or maybe i have to uh, put in those requirements of the stakeholder into the program as if program is not impacted adversely gaining and maintaining stakeholder support there has to be some kind of transparency stakeholder must have confidence in you and you may have to gain stakeholder support and maintain that support now gaining support means being transparent and honest with your stakeholder trying your best to fulfill your needs and expectations and wherever you can't fulfill that you must take him into confidence and convince him how and why his 
needs and expectations cannot be considered, cannot be fulfilled. So that way, stakeholder will be with you rather than being an opponent. Moreover, it is not only gaining the support of the stakeholder in the uh, at one point in time. You have to maintain the support. You will have kind of a friendly relationship with stakeholder throughout your interaction during the program. So stakeholder is very dear and near to you. Then managing the stakeholder communication. This is again very important that every stakeholder should get should be communicated what fulfills their needs, desires and expectations. You see, this is very important. First of all, I am saying you need not hide anything from anyone. There is nothing secret until and unless explicitly defined the act of in the act of secrecy. If there is something secret, there will be a non-disclosure act, you know, uh, act signed by that individual who can be shared with that information. But apart from that, there is nothing secret for any stakeholder. Having said that, you must understand that you need not overload any stakeholder with undue communication which he does not desire, it does not need, or he does not expect. So those communications which are not meant for a specific stakeholder should not be communicated to them. Not that we want to keep that secret, but because that is unnecessary, right? And that unnecessary communication, if it happens, may have even an adverse effect on the project. I, I am once again saying, we are not at all talking about hiding something from the stakeholder. I am just telling that you should communicate what is necessary to be communicated to the stakeholder according to, this is very important, according to the stakeholder needs, desires and expectations. Then as we have to maintain the relationship with the stakeholder throughout, then we have to mitigate and channel stakeholder resistance. There, there will be times in the project where a stakeholder becomes hostile or he resists whatever are the decisions of the program so in that case as i said that you have to be uh, you have to gain support of the stakeholder and take them along so in case of resistance you should be close to them like a friend making them understand trying to mitigate the situation channel their resistance toward the positive side and ultimately you have to take the benefit out of it there is there is no negative politics going on but yes you must have some political acumen you must understand as a program manager being a very senior position right you must understand the politics and you must deal with the stakeholders appropriately and positively no negative uh, politics i'm not not at all uh, you know uh, talking about that then is a program governance this enables and performs programs decision making establishes practices to support the program and maintains program oversight in other words this program governance is the book of law for the program how the program should happen what are the you know regulations applicable to this program naturally this is part of the organizational governance but specific to the program there might have certain other regulations and and things added to uh, the governance mechanism applicable to the programs right so how the decision making in the program should happen what should be the board who should make decisions what should be the channel and procedure of making the decision then it establishes the practices to support the program and maintains the program oversight how the program will be you know how the kpis are identified or the how the higher management the governance body uh, steering committee could have an eye on how well the program is performing and oversight of the program and then it also program governance establishes the processes and procedures that the the books book of rules why for maintaining program management oversight and decision making as we said earlier for applicable policies and practices throughout the course of the program so for all practical purposes during the whole life of program we would be continuously governed by the program governance then is a project life cycle program life cycle program life cycle management is 
managing all the program activities. So now we are talking about the program activities and program activities are what? Program activities are also components of the program just like projects and sub program. So program activities would maybe uh, one big uh, component or many components comprising of various program component uh, program activities. They are required to facilitate the working of the program and that would include the program definition, the program benefit delivery, program closure or consolidation of the benefits or whatever uh, has to be done by the program staff. Remember program staff is going to be separate from the project staff. Project staff is under command of the project manager and they are only responsible for creating that product service or result which has been assigned to the project. Now once that product service or result is produced when the project is complete this product service or result comes to the program team and program activities are then conducted to reap benefits out of them to realize benefits out of them and unifying those benefits and doing lot many things until all the benefits are unified then they will be transitioned and ultimately a sustainment plan and all that will happen till program player right so it will facilitate program definition benefit delivery till program closure. now now that we have been introduced to all the five uh, domains performance domains these domains run concurrently they happen in parallel and throughout the duration of the program there is no sequence to them they, uh, all of these five domains are simultaneously happening but you may say that a program life cycle management is at the core of it and all of these other four domains are running in parallel doing their respective work it is within these domains that the program manager and the program team performs their task so the work of the program is happening through the program manager and the program team and you during these various performance domains they actually work nature of and complexity of the program being implemented determines the degree of activity required within a particular domain at any particular point in time right so how complex a specific domain is this all depends upon what is to be done there every program requires some activity in each of these performance domains you cannot have uh, no activity in one of the program domains every program domain will have to be managed will have to happen that is another case that some domain is happening more rigorously is more complex and the other is not so during the entire course of the program all the domains are happening some are more rigorous some are less work within these domains is iterative in nature and is repeated frequently because as i said that the work of the program the program program activity it is a work of the program the work of the program is kind of a operation within the program the mechanism by which the program is running programs usually are of a longer longer duration five years ten years twenty years so uh, there are some repetitive habits or activities which keep happening within the program they these are the program activities and these are actually doing what they are working on either uh, 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 on one of the five domains then each domain is described in detail in their respective section actually we have got a separate chapter for every domain so uh, in-depth discussion will be there okay so far uh, uh, do you have any questions i'm opening the mic for you anything to discuss if you did not understand please discuss just a minute because my i'm not able to yeah now you can speak if you are not speaking please no sir my sure sir did you 
you can say long term out outcomes or whatever so as we said primary purpose of program definition is to progressively reproduce the strategic objective given to it to be addressed by the program define the expected program outcome what are the benefits to be realized and after outlining that seek approval for the program that is the basic approval for if the program should be done or not if organization feels that this program should be done they, it will be allowed program benefit delivery throughout this iterative phase program components are planned integrated and managed you see just like in a uh, in a uh, network diagram we do have a network diagram even in program but that is not as detailed as going down to the activity level that is just going down to you know uh, the project level are at most to the phases of the project level not not later than that so program components are planned integrated and managed when which component would have to be done and when which benefits are expected to be yielded to facilitate the delivery of the intended program benefit the overall program benefit how would that be yielded as if these all these projects are giving their outcomes and ultimately you know this is all processed and consolidated and will they really result in the program benefits this is what how what and how the benefits will be delivered program closure the purpose of this phase is to execute a controlled closure controlled closure means to ensure that all the benefits have been consolidated all the outcomes outputs have been converted into benefits all the benefits have been consolidated there is a transition system available and there is a sustainment plan so that would actually once it has been transitioned and sustainment plan has been provided to the customer and they, uh, your job uh, as a program are considered complete while projects are considered temporary endeavors of relatively short duration programs often span considerably longer durations multiple years and some in some cases decades as i said before having said that still a program will finish some day a program is also kind of a temporary endeavor but we are much more flexible about the life of a program if a program has not you know fulfilled its objective in the predefined period we are more flexible uh, through progressive elaboration we can add time to the program add resources to the program as if uh, it can be completed but project because they are in shorter duration so we are a lit little bit more strict with them regardless of duration all programs follow a similar trajectory they all go through the three things we uh, the life cycle we just talked about a program is initiated and defined during the program definition phase it is implemented in the program benefit delivery phase where individual components are initiated you know in the program benefit uh, delivery phase uh, this is where the components are initiated the charter pro project charters are given there you know in, in other words you may call it the execution of the program during the execution of the program the projects or components are initiated implemented transitioned and closed so to hold the story of projects and components would be closed during the execution or the benefit delivery phase of the program and while this is happening the projects are happening the components are happening and being closed the benefits are being delivered transitioned and sustained right benefits are being delivered how the deliverable of the projects are being converted into benefits by the program activities they are transitioned to the customer by the program activities and sustainment plan is provided by the program activities therefore this all is the responsibility of program activities and program activities as i said before could be considered as also a component or a number of many components 
so this is happening during the execution or implementation of a program this is called program benefits delivery phase a program is transitioned and closed or the work is transitioned to another program this is also possible that one program has finished and then another program has taken over so in that case the first program will transition its work to the next next program and then next program will continue so this can happen in our program closure phase that we are handing it over transitioning it to another program to the organization to the customer or whomsoever detailed description of the life cycle phases are provided in section 7.1 which is which we are going to be studying later okay let's talk a bit more about the program activities although we have mentioned the word program activities time and again and we uh, probably are much more clear about what the program activities are and what are the components Co program activities could also be components, but projects are components sub programs are components and then the third thing is the program activities can all be uni unifiedly called as uh, as a component or they can, could be considered as separate components of program activities doing various different responsibilities so what are program activities these are the collection of work undertaken in a program for the purpose of the overall program implementation during the program implementation phase whatever we do which is not the responsibility of any project or any sub program that is the program activity you know all what we consider doing you know uh, collecting the deliverables uh, running running the uh, running the output creating the benefits unifying the benefits and all that this is all the responsibility of the program activities so it is collectively known as program activities the names and descriptions of the program activities may appear to be similar to those of the project activities they may look like the names look like the project activities however content and scope of the activities are different program activities are different from the project activities they are much more superior they have got different responsibility they have a different scope they do not uh, focus towards creation of a deliverable they are they are more focused towards the benefit realization for example project risk management activities project risk management activities focus on an individual component project while program risk management may also be you know there, there might be the same kind of activity but this program risk management activity incorporates not only the project level risk and program level risk they address the overall risk of the whole program you see the scope is different program activities have much larger chunk on their plate to eat the processes and tools used in the sporting activities can be found in the project management dream described in the latest edition of pmbok guide with a program activity process encompassing greater number of inputs and typically greater scope so as far as the project activities are concerned you know the projects are concerned the component projects are concerned they will not be governed by program management standard projects will be governed by pmbok guide right so pmbok guide will be applicable to all projects within the program but all the program activities would be governed by the standard for program management it is important to note that program activities seldom directly support individual program components as the components implement and control their own activities every component project or sub program is independent they are responsible for their work program activities are not going to do the work of a project or a sub program they are responsible only from the program level activities <clears throat> following the same example results of the individual component project risk planning effort provides input to the program risk planning effort so when we are 
an individual project is doing its risk planning, they submit their findings or their risks or whatever the plan is, risk management plan, to the program for approval. And program risk management will include those things which are relevant to the program, meaning what? That if there are certain risks which are applicable to more than one project at a time, they may have to be handled by the program and program may take over that risk as a program risk. And thus the projects will not be allowed to deal with that risk at their own. Risk control is performed continuously at both the program component level and the program level itself. Pro project risk level risks may be escalated to the program level or have a cumulative effect that requires the risk to be addressed at the program level. So if a project is identifying risks and it, it, it has identified a risk which may not be in the realm of the project and it is considered that it may have to be uh, a program risk, it may be escalated up to the program level. Or maybe the cumulative effect of the risk may impact the program risk management. So that would also be communicated to the program and then program activities will take over that much of job. While risk control is performed again at the component level, uh, every project is responsible for its own risk control. The program manager, uh, program monitors the results and ensures overall program risk management and control. So when program is, is looking at the overall program risk, it is not only responsible for the program risk, but also having reports coming from the projects and the components. So if a project is becoming more risky, your program is getting more risky. Therefore, you have to have an eye on your project level risks. Not, not micromanaging, but some kind of key performance indicators which would indicate that program risks are getting out of hand and you may have to uh, look at your program level risks that they are increasing to do that. Now let's talk about the program management performance domain uh, interaction. How do they interact with each other? Now before I can start this, I will once again give you a chance to discuss any points you may feel fit. Yes, please. Ji, Ashim. No, no, nothing. Uh, Shaul Amit. Sir, program life cycle, um, uh, there, there will be questions from program life cycle management, right? Of course, sir. This... Okay. From, from all the domains, it will be All there. the domains, all the domains. You, you remember, we have discussed, um, uh, there is a distribution of hmm. questions in the uh, uh, okay. exam content outline according to the domains. According to the domains. Okay. So you will definitely have questions from each domain. Okay, I have gone through your question and answers. Mm. Okay, well, maybe the concept has been taken from here, but everything depends on the experience mm. you might be answering. From the actual exam? Yeah, actual exam. Or uh, I've gone through your some of your sample questions mm. Mm. on the from the domains. Right. Nothing directly from it. Nothing directly from the books. All. No, no, uh, no, no, no. There will be nothing from the book. Actually. This is yeah. just the base, base knowledge you are gathering. Now, whatever scenario is posed to you in the exam, you will have to base on this basis an answer from your experience. Actually, the questions are based, uh, are asked for your experience. But before you can apply your experience, you must consult your base. This is the base knowledge which I'm providing you. This is always going to be good, right? But you have to, you know, yeah. visualize the scenario and, uh, you know, invoke your experience and see what actually will you do in that situation. Thank you, sir. Okay. Most welcome. Okay. So, uh, talking about the interaction, all five program management performance domains interact with each other throughout the course of the program. How much interaction there mm -hmm. will be and when it should occur will depend upon the program and its component. 
So one thing is established that all the five domains are going to interact with each other and the level of interactivity may, may differ from project to program to program. The amount of interaction for any given program is as varied as the number of programs that exist, right? So if there are 20 programs, there might be 20 different sets of interactions happening in 20 different pro programs. So there is no one law or rule that all programs will have this level of interactivity. Normally, organizations pursue and implement similar programs because their organizational structure and resources are established to handle those particular programs. In these cases, the interactions amongst the program performance domains are similar and often repetitive. So generally speaking, an organization would have a specialization or a need for doing similar kinds of programs and therefore their program management uh, system would be would provide the similar kind of guidance right so if you are you know in the real estate business then all your programs are of real estate business and all your practices would be kind of alike so whatever program you are undertaking you would be using the similar mechanism which could be otherwise repetitive sometimes maybe in one program you are doing the same thing and in another program you may be doing exactly the same thing large technology organizations often prescribe domain interactions in order to define benefits and ensure stakeholder agreement related to the scope of the benefit <coughs> again very important point when we are dealing with large technology technology organizations consensus is a must you know this is a great problem larger the thing more are the stakeholders and more varied their demands and expectations are so <clears throat> when you are defining the benefits you must ensure all the stakeholders are somehow in agreement related to the scope of the overall benefits this is again a very important point and this actually emphasizes the need for stakeholder engagement which we already have talked about also all five domains interact with each other with varying degrees of intensity as i said earlier these domains are the areas in which program managers will spend their time while implementing the program right so program manager most of his time will be spent in one of these domains in all of these five domains program manager is actually busy anywhere here they accurately reflect the higher level business functions that are essential aspects of the program manager's job regardless of the size of organization industry or business focus or geographic location program manager's job is actually handling these five domains that's it no matter what what kind of program you are dealing what is the higher level business function but always program manager's job is actually managing and dealing with these five domains then we have organizational strategy portfolio management and program management linkages how we connect the organizational strategy with the portfolio management and then to the program management what are the linkages now we are going to talk a little bit more in depth about it although we have already discussed it earlier even in project management we do talk about organizational strategy linkages with the portfolio program and project but here now we are specifically defining how they are properly connected programs typically find their starting point during an organization's strategic planning effort so programs will date back to the organization's strategic plan when the organization created a strategic plan where the full spectrum of the organizational investments are evaluated and aligned to the organizational operation strategies how organized organization's strategic plan is converted into organization's operational strategy that is where the money comes in organization's investment comes in and before you can invest on any one of the initiative you must properly evaluate it from the financial point of view as well as look at the 
alignment with the organizational strategy right so if it is is it viable and well aligned only then that initiative will be taken up this is the history how the programs come into being so there might have been organizational strategic planning going on and at that point they would have decided which initiatives are more important to the organization and what are the investment constraints how much can we invest and all and basically this also indicates in a way that portfolio is left there to decide about the financial investment making investment decision making so during the planning effort an organization conducts portfolio reviews so portfolio comes into play during the organization's uh, strategic planning and it evaluates from the financial point of view value generated from the projects programs and operational work and we are talking about the organizational strategic plan how the various project programs and other operational work can contribute towards the accomplishment of the organizational strategic plan so there it would be decided which initiatives from project program or overall operation could be taken up so that is the deciding point as a business climate our organizational strategy changes organizations continuously evaluate their work through portfolio reviews you see if organization strategy somehow changes due to any reason you know business climate has changed organization has decided a different way of handling the things they they have changed their overall strategy that is the point as soon as organization strategy is changed the portfolio is responsible to continuously evaluate all the projects programs and operations as if are they still aligned with the new strategy or not and then a decision is taken by the portfolio that according to the new strategy there are certain programs projects or even operations which may not be continued because they are no more viable and thus new projects programs or operations may have to be started so this is all the game with the portfolio management this portfolio review will decide the fate of the whole portfolio reinforcing components of the portfolio that are in alignment and are achieving intended benefits and organizational objectives and closing the initi initiatives that are not all those initiatives that are not no more aligned with the organizational strategy may have to be closed down so the decision is with the portfolio review portfolio management is in charge of that decision so the first thing which changes when organizational strategy changes is the portfolio portfolio immediately take account of the change in organizational strategy and quickly reviews everything again so i am not wrong if i say that portfolio management and organizational strategy are uh, you know they are bound back to back with, with each other as soon as strategy change direction portfolio realigns and reviews the portfolio uh, strategy new initiative that have potential for contributing to the overall forward progress and success for the organization are proposed and analyzed that means uh, the portfolio is also doing the business case thing that does have other feasible feasibilities lying in front of uh, him and if he sees that the current projects and programs are no more valid then new projects or programs may have to be initiated so he proposes and analyzes them during the portfolio review process and create for new projects for components and programs and i hope you understand what are uh, what are the components of a portfolio the portfolio may have sub portfolio it may have program it may have independent projects okay
let right during an organization's portfolio review process programs are evaluated to ensure that they are performing as expected and they remain aligned with the organization strategy and objective so whenever portfolio review happens all the programs and even the independent projects are all evaluated again to see are they are they still aligned with the changed strategy whatever is the current organizational strategy and objective are these projects and programs st still okay with that new strategy or not if not then there might be some changes expected programs are typically reviewed to ensure the program's business case charter and benefit realization plan reflect the current and most accurate profile of the intended outcome so a kind of analysis is carried out on the status of a program whatever was the business case and charter and benefit realization plan and how much it has achieved and maybe if there might be in case of program i would be a bit more flexible i might like to you know somehow change the scope of the program and let it happen rather than closing it down until and unless this program has become completely useless right but in case of projects probably i'll kill the project because a major change in scope in project may not work a concept may be approved for a limited time with limited funding to develop a business case for further evaluation right a new business case might be created for a program which is currently running according to the new strategy the business case is then reviewed during the portfolio review process this occurs during the program formulation subphase of the program life cycle with the actual program when the actual program is approved funding is formally approved and allocated and a program manager is assigned to the initiative that is in case a new program is taking birth during the delivery phase program components are introduced and integrated naturally the projects and sub programs and all that and benefits start delivering during this phase individual projects and sub programs within the program may begin and end as the program continues during the delivery of the benefit meaning what that during the execution or implementation of the program all the project life cycles are being completed all the components are living their life off the program is closed when the desired benefits are achieved or when reasons for closure arise program may close when the benefits and objectives to be achieved by the program are lo no longer in alignment so in the previous point it has said the either the desired benefits have been achieved or when reasons for closure arise and what are those reasons and the, in the last point it is giving us that reason program may close when benefits and objectives to be achieved by the program are no longer in alignment with the organizational strategy our measurements against the program key performance indicators reveal that the business case for the program is no longer viable you understand a program in this case is a fit case for closure without even accomplishing its objective the program will be declared closed so the decision lies with the portfolio manager that is a big link that is a big link of program with portfolio thus the decision of the fate of a program in case the strategy of the organization changes lies with the portfolio manager okay ji uh, so far so good any points so we can consider portfolio as something on top of programs they have higher authority of course right? yeah, of course portfolio is always a higher level is always a senior level and that is working in support of the strategic organizational strategy organizational so you can have yes so the port the program managers are reporting to portfolio manager uh, well not exactly uh, i'm not saying it that from that perspective strategically strategically 
from the analysis and review point of view, portfolio has a bigger say. Portfolio can kill a project or a program, but at the same time, portfolio need not be micromanaging the program. Why should a program manager reporting to portfolio manager? Is he going to take orders from the portfolio manager for normal running of the program? No, sir. Po program manager does not take orders from portfolio manager how to run the program. Program manager has program sponsor sitting on top. So it is only the investment decision making things are the analysis things going on in the portfolio, but portfolio's decision if approved by strategy is final. If it, it says that this program is no more valid, then this is a technical decision. This is an investment decision and it is final. Program will be killed. But uh, and yes, program manager may be supposed to provide certain reports and details to portfolio manager as if his analysis is convenient. Portfolio manager may require certain reports for doing his analysis, but not day to day running of the program portfolio never ever gets involved in day to day running of programs and projects. Similarly, as I said, program manager never gets involved in day to day running of the projects. Program manager never it is not the responsibility of program manager to go and start running the project of his project manager. Not at all. Similarly, portfolio manager is not actually uh, uh, looking at the day to day running of the program. That was my point. Is that okay? Yeah, Shim. Yes, yes, okay, okay. All right. Okay, so let's look at the program and portfolio distinctions. While program and portfolio are both collection of projects, activities, and non project work, there are elements that clearly differentiate them and aid in the clarification between the two. Now, you see, they are, you know, as far as the composition is concerned, with a difference of the level, otherwise, they are very similar. Program has got sub programs, projects, and so on, and, and program work. But portfolio has got, portfolio has got sub portfolios programs portfolio work and maybe operations our program is a group of related projects this is important this is a big difference all the contents of the program all the components of the program have to be related whereas the contents of a portfolio may not be related so program is a group of related projects sub programs and program activities managed in a coordinated way so all the projects all the components within a program are not only related but there has to be a coordination factor amongst themselves as if they can obtain benefits not available from managing them individually right when looking carefully at this definition these words appear to describe portfolio and if that were the case questions about the differences between programs and portfolios would certainly follow now Yes, it looks like that this is a higher level and portfolio is even the next higher level, but there is a difference of what difference of relation and of coordination. The, the, the contents, the components of a portfolio may or may not be related and there is no element of coordination in them. To clarify the difference between these important organizational constructs, Two aspects stand out relatedness and time. First, talking about relatedness. A primary consideration that differentiates programs and portfolios is the concept introduced and implied by the word related. In the definition of the program, the work included is interdependent such that the intended outcome is dependent on the delivery of all elements in the scope of the program. In a portfolio, the work included is related in any way the portfolio owner chooses. Th that is very interesting. Th there is a kind of relationship also existing in portfolio, but that is a category relationship. You are saying these all are the projects of say South Punjab. This is a category. This does not show that all the projects of South Punjab are inter 
connected with each other are they interrelated are they are interdependent on each other that does not mean that but there is only one relation and that is of category and that is not sufficient so portfolio may have this kind of relationship but not the intimate relationship as we had in, in programs Typical portfolio groupings of work include efforts staff from the same resource pool. All of these projects are using the same resource pool. Therefore, this is one portfolio or uh, work delivered to the same client. All these projects are for the same client Our programs are for the same client. This is one kind of a grouping work conducted in the same geographic area. This is a grouping, but groupings does not make a uh, you know, is, is, is a cursory relationship. This is not an interrelationship. Work included in the portfolio may span a variety of diverse initiatives, and these initiatives can be quite independent. There is no dependency in portfolio. It is not necessary that the components of a portfolio are interdependent on each other. No, they may or they may not. They may be related, they may not. But in program, it is a must. Though the initiatives may be entirely independent and not related to one another in any way, the organization may group and manage them together for ease of oversight and control. The only purpose of grouping them together was just to have convenience in oversight and control. Right? So that was the purpose uh, of portfolio putting together some kind of categories second difference is time so another attribute that differentiates program from portfolio is the element of time programs like projects include the concept of time as an aspect of work so that, although we are a bit more flexible in programs as compared to projects because projects have a temporary endeavor they must start and finish at some time programs also but we are kind of flexible but still programs do finish although they may have longer duration but they do finish although we may be very flexible in extending time of a program but still they do finish but operation the portfolios they never finish because projects and programs keep uh, you know completing and uh, new project and program keep coming portfolio will exist though they may span multiple years or decades. Programs are characterized by the existence of a clearly defined beginning and future endpoint and a set of outcomes and plan benefits that are to be achieved during the conduct of the program. Portfolios, on the other hand, while being reviewed on a regular basis for decision making purposes, are not expected to be constrained to end on a specific date. Portfolio does not end. The various initiatives and work elements defined within portfolios do not directly relate to one another and do not rely on each other to achieve benefits. That is again, we understand. In portfolios, the organization's strategic plan and business cycle dictates the start and end of specific investment. And these investments may serve widely divergent objectives. So the investments within a portfolio, they may start or they may end. The funding for a specific kind of work may have started at a specific point in time and may ended at a specific point in time, but that does not describe the life of a portfolio. Portfolio life is not dependent on the funding. Additionally, work and investments within the portfolio may continue for years or decades or may be altered or terminated by the organization as the business environment changes. Finally, Portfolios contain proposals for various initiatives, including programs and projects that should be evaluated and, evaluated and aligned with the organization's strategic objective before they are approved. The proposal may exist in the organization's portfolio for an indeterminate length of time. So all the viable projects would be lying with the portfolio manager and he would be analyzing them time and again and putting them in some kind of prioritization which projects to start, which not to start. So all the business cases are held by the portfolio manager. Fundings may come, fundings may go, they may, may start, may close, but the fate of which project or program has to start and which has to be killed or finished is done by the portfolio manager. 
now and i i do want to uh, uh, highlight another very important aspect this we are talking from the perspective of an organization which is formally aware of portfolio management and they have a proper mechanism of portfolio management there are many organizations which do not understand what a portfolio is and they don't ever have seen a portfolio office a portfolio manager how a portfolio works they don't know so does that mean portfolio does not exist in an organization where no portfolio management is being done this is my question to you ji shaul amit i think my personal thinking is if they are not following the recommended practices and if they are not focusing on benefits then yes we will say that their portfolio management is not occurring portfolio management is not occurring but do they have a portfolio or not my question is do they have a portfolio or not well if you if they are investing in a project or any task then definitely if the financial aspect is there then there is a portfolio right right <clears throat> that is my point whether being managed or not there will always be a portfolio in an organization although they may be ignorant of the fact that this portfolio has to be properly managed they don't know how to manage this portfolio but if they are running programs and projects then they do have a portfolio and somebody from the executive committee from the strategic strategic steering committee must be making those decisions when required there is not a portfolio manager but the key decisions for initiating a project or program or killing a program or a project somebody is taking those so basically the portfolio management is informally being done already so every organization will have portfolio will have a portfolio but they may not have a management portfolio management proper portfolio management going on but what we are referring here is a proper portfolio management thing going on and that's why we are signing those responsibilities properly ki hey, hashim okay understood yeah yes wonderful okay let's move on the summary of this distinction is the programs differ from portfolio in two important ways number one programs include work projects programs and other work that are related in some way and collectively contribute to the achievement of the program outcome and intended benefit programs also include the concept of time and incorporate schedules through which specific milestones achievements are measured portfolio does not have these two things portfolios do not require the work with the portfolio to be related and are managed in an ongoing fashion as initiative programs and projects are introduced to the portfolio and are subsequently completed and this journey continues portfolios provide a means for the organization to effectively manage a collection of investments and work that are important to the achievement of the organization strategic objectives so this summarizes our differences now let's take on uh, the differences between program and projects effective framework program management provides organizations with an effective framework for managing interrelated groupings of work so that is the key that is core if you want the work to be done more efficiently in more you know uh, better you want to realize better benefits then probably you have to use this effective framework where interrelated groups of works could be handled and that is the projects sub program project program activities and all this would be the, these components will form up to be the program designed to produce benefits not achievable by managing the work as individual initiatives programs are often large naturally larger than projects they are complex they are lengthy and they accept uncertainty 
larger an element, more uncertainty is there. Like, you know, if it is, if there is a thing which is longer in duration, then naturally we would not be able to perceive uh, the complete plan along the whole long length. So there is a level of uncertainty always with a program, higher uncertainty in programs than the project. This section further discusses three characteristics that distinguish programs from projects. These fundamental differences are found in the way programs and projects are managed in response to uncertainty, change and complexity. So we will, we will look at the differences between the program and project from uncertainty, change and complexity point of view. First, talking about uncertainty. Uncertainty is an inevitable challenge of managing programs. And as I said, they will, programs will always be more uncertain than the projects. Uncertainty is especially high in the beginning of a program as the outcomes are not clear naturally. And that is true for projects also. Programs and projects both exist in organizational environment in which the output benefits or outcome of the work may be somewhat unpredictable or uncertain, right? So this applies to both programs and the project that there is a level of uncertainty and there, uh, there cannot be predicted. The benefits, ultimate benefits may not be properly predicted. But having considered that, now consider programs are of a longer duration and complexity. So more uncertainty. Projects may be shorter than programs, so less uncertainty from that point of view. Changes external to the organizational environment also create uncertainty, which increase the uncertainty of managing programs. So the environment of program is wider as compared to the project and thus causes more uncertainty, more stakeholders. Within the context of the organization, however, individual projects may be considered to be more certain than programs. Although both have uncertainty, but projects being smarter, smarter and smaller, they will have uh, lesser uncertainty. They are a bit more certain than the programs. Programs and projects exist in organizational environment in which the output of or outcome of the work may be somewhat unpredictable or uncertain. Both ways, there is a level of uncertainty. Within the context of the organization, individual projects are considerably more certain than programs. As I just said, the expected results of projects are generally more certain than those of the program at the time of their inception. As projects proceed, their abilities to deliver those outputs on time, on budget, and according to specification becomes more certain as a result of the progressive elaboration that removes uncertainty during the course of the project. As we move on in the life of the project, uncertainty is removed gradually. And as we near the end of the project, uncertainty eliminates. By contrast, program may not have their entire scope determined upon initiation. This establishes an initial uncertainty about the program direction and outcome. During the program, Scope and contact are continually elaborated, clarified, and adjusted to ensure the program outcomes remain in alignment with the in, uh, intended variable. So this is a target. From the program point of view, we are adjusting the scope and content for keeping them aligned with the intended variable. The result is an initial program environment that is recognized to be uncertain. So initially, program environment is uncertain, implies the need for a management style that embraces uncertainty in order to address it more effectively. So in program, we are not really sure how to handle it, but we accept it as such. The uncertainty is a part of the program and we live with it. Whereas in projects, uncertainty is supposed to be removed towards the end. Because a program's approach may be modified during the course of the program to optimize pursuit of its goals, program activities may be observed either to decrease uncertainty or at times to uncover it to leading perceiving perceived increase in uncertainty so this is this is something different as uh, compared to the pro project in program the program activities may 
result in decreased uncertainty. There might be facts which become available just like projects which uh, remove uncertainty from the program. But there might be new uncertainties being uncovered. So that way, the level of uncertainty in program is continuously more than the project. Program may include individual component projects that are entirely successful in achieving their intended delivery, providing output product service as a result as planned. And the interesting part is here. All the projects of a program may be a great success. Can the program be a success? It can be assured that the program will be a success. My question to you. Uh, G -G. We will need to look at the benefits that is it delivering which were originally uh, decided or not. Uh, okay. So Every the program focuses on benefits delivery, not on the product delivery. Yes, of course, of course. All the benefits of the projects have been delivered correctly, or for that matter, the products have been delivered correctly. They may not have yielded the desired benefits. Though all the projects are successful, the program may not still be successful because all the benefits are not as desired. Therefore, the level of uncertainty is more in program. That is another reason. However, okay. in the context of the program outcomes, however, in the context of the program outcomes and desired benefits, these individual component projects may not contribute at all to the outcome that was anticipated. This creates additional uncertainty about the results of the program may achieve you see we may have planned the program wrongly we may have, may have anticipated the benefits wrongly and the uh, the benefits coming out of the even projects may not be summing up to be the desired desired benefit therefore uh, our may, we may have forgotten to to consider a project to be done which could have added a benefit which could have completed the overall benefit. So there might be a, a lot of uncertainty there. Programs may include individual component projects that are entirely successful in achieving their intended delivery. However, in the context of program outcome and desired benefits, these individual component projects may not contribute at all. This creates additional uncertainty. Program management provides organizations with an effective framework for managing interrelated grouping of work. This is something special about programs that interrelated group of work is being managed through the program designed to produce those benefits not achievable by managing the work as individual initiative. Those benefits could not ever have been achieved if we could have done those projects separately because if we did and even if we yielded the benefits of those separate projects, those benefits could sum up to the total benefit, but not the collective benefit, the, the collaborative benefit, which uh, program management only can produce. Unlike projects, they are characterized as unique and temporary. Programs are often large, complex, and lengthy, and tend to be less well-defined. Project is very well-defined. This is unique and temporary. Program is also temporary, but it is not very well defined it is it has got it is large it is complex it is lengthy so it, it cannot be you know uh, a very small duration so anyways temporary does not mean the project even will have a small duration projects can have a very large duration but programs are more uh, you know uncertain as far as the duration is concerned but this one will agree that every program will finish someday portfolio never finishes this section discusses two characteristics that distinguish programs from projects these fundamental differences are found in the way projects and manage the response of uncertainty and change okay with the focus of benefit realization and the multiple components put together to produce the intended outcomes the complexity and duration of programs demand take a collective view of all the program components 
to thoroughly understand and successfully manage the progress and contributions of the component parts so even if the projects within the program are doing fine program manager is more concerned about looking at the success of the benefit generation benefit realization from each of the component projects and then the unification of those benefits into the desired objective this distinguishes and differentiates the program program management and project management approaches and explains the need for both within a program the expected output of projects are generally more certain than those of programs in time of their inception i think we have covered all these points already let us move on okay program and project change program managers need to consider two different categories of change internal change and external change internal change refers to changes within the program and external change refers to the need to adopt the organization in order for it to be able to exploit the benefit created by the program so if there is a change request within the program that would be internal internal change and external change is by environment the program has to the organization has needs to adopt to the external changes in order to be able to exploit the benefits created by the program issues related to change should be addressed differently within the programs and projects projects deal with change in form of scope time and cost and atmospheric quality as with uncertainty programs should be better equipped to deal with change because they have the ability to change the direction of a component cancel a component or start a new component now try to understand just like a portfolio could kill a project or a program under it program has got same powers as far as its components are concerned a program can reevaluate its strategy and decide that a certain pro project they had decided to do is not going to be actually fulfilling those benefits and thus may be killed and you can change your plan and maybe you add two new projects to shield those specific benefits which are required as new as maybe need for external change because of an external change your benefits have been reorchestrated slightly and therefore you may have to kill a project and may start another or two projects to actually yield those benefits so because the program life is lengthy so these things may happen in a program that is exactly why the program duration is not very fixed maybe this 10 year program will finish in 15 years maybe you know you will be given the extension due to this this change request of the program in which you have killed a pro program project and introduced a new new two program new two two projects in both programs and projects there should be a rational that justifies that the advantages originating from a proposed change will outweigh the potential drawback this is the common ground in both projects and programs that we have to justify that whatever the change has been proposed is going to ultimately yield a benefit it is it is it is better than the previous one change within a project affects the defined deliverables at the tactical level whereas change within a program affects the delivery of intended benefits at the strategic level because program is directly connected with the strategic objectives so any any change in benefits any change in benefits should affect the strategy whereas projects are dealing with tactical level changes managing changes within a program requires strategic insight and understanding of the program objectives and intended benefits change to any component within a program may have a direct impact on the delivery of other related components which necessitates a change in those specific components so if we change anything in one component there are many other components there some of them will be impacted and everything will have to be adjusted so whole of the program management plan will have to be rehashed so any change in any component of the program may need to update the whole whole plan change of a project 
is generally local to the project and related to the technical level so if something is changing within a project that may not affect outside of the project in programs change management is a key activity enabling stakeholders to carefully analyze the need for proposed change impact of the change and the approach or process for implementing and communicating the change the change management plan which is part of the program management plan and developed during the program preparation establishes the change management authority so just like you know uh, in the beginning when we are developing the project management plan we have laid out the complete mechanism of change in the change management plan and who is authorized what is the procedure how it is to be done so this is all established at the time of the program management plan in projects and programs the change management process fills a key functional role enabling stakeholders to carefully analyze so stakeholder is involved in your change management as far as the programs are concerned they are more involved here in case of the program so carefully analyze the need for proposed change impact of the change and the approach or process for implementing and communicating the change this is all what you need to do about the program change the change management process also establishes the authority that certain stakeholders and team members will have for collectively approving or disapproving the proposed change who is actually the body who is authorized just like we have a change control board in a project so this kind of in, uh, a body may have to be there for program level as well program change program managers approach change at the program level in a fundamentally different way program man managers depend on a predetermined consistent level of performance from the components of the program for components that are projects program managers rightfully expect the project to be delivered on time on budget and within scope that is the responsibility of the project and with an acceptable level of quality for other programs and program activities the program manager should require that each be performed in a manner that will contribute positively to the program outcomes and anticipated benefits or reduce the negative outcome so collectively all of these components like you know the project component and the sub program component and program activities all of them should be contributing positively to the program and program manager has to view the change in that perspective from where the change is coming if it is coming from project is a technical change then we would only be looking at a scope time cost and quality when it is coming from the sub programs and program uh, activities then we will be looking at the anticipated benefits for program components just as in the projects change management is employed to understand and control the variability of each component schedule cost and output as i just said as far as the projects are concerned in addition program management can, can create new components or cancel existing components this is we discussed earlier that it is the prerogative of the program manager that he as a result of a change he may decide to kill a project and to start another one or something else some new component to be created so he can cancel an existing one or create a new one this change is made to ensure the optimal delivery of benefits and naturally because there was uncertainty in the beginning and now because certain things might have been clarified and now he sees things more clearly and therefore he is changing his plan and this change could happen in projects change management is employed to help the project manager team and stakeholders monitor and control the amount of variance from the plans cost schedule etc while protecting the approved attribute that is called the baseline and characteristic of the planned output so in project we are more focused on scope time cost quality and the baselines if a change is required the impact is seen on cost schedule scope quality outputs etc uh, then a change request is developed to modify either the cost schedule and whatever in the project management plan if accepted the change is incorporated into the structure of the project project management plan is revised or documents are revised uh, adjusted to accommodate all aspects of the change project is then replanned that means the new project management plan updated project plan comes into being with updated cost schedule and deliverables once completed and accepted change management is employed to ensure the project remains aligned with the new baseline right now the new baseline has been established and we confirm 
that it now everything is approved and okay project chooses change management to help manage the impact of variance caused by known risks and by expected events the project encounters on its path to completion this is we are talking about the project change now how to manage change from the project perspective the project is then replanned and updated as we said new baseline change request change management impact of variance given the consistent delivery of program component program manager addresses the uncertainty of the overall program outcome so now we are talking about the program change in program so program manager addresses the uncertainty of the overall program outcome and anticipates that it is possible for some of the pro program component to be successfully delivered okay but will produce entirely unexpected results that may or may not contribute positive to, positively to the intended benefits of the program so he finds it out he analyzes it and he finds it out that some of the components are not expected to yield the desired benefit in order to address the components inherent unpredictability program manager may group individual components to manage them more effectively so he can reorder them he can you know uh, manage them in more effective way in addition the program manager may redirect replan or stop individual efforts entirely knowing they will not help achieve the desired program benefits if left unattended in the context of the evolving environment when this occurs program manager employs change management at the program level to redirect and modify the trajectory of the program to ensure it aligns with the expected value to be delivered new strategy social and economic state are the perception of the program beneficiaries so in that case now we are trying to consider that reordering the things are not going to solve the problem we may have to kill certain elements of the program and we may have to start we have to replan things programs use change management in a forward looking proactive manner to adopt the program to the evolving environment as the things will change we will have to change additionally this is an iterative process repeatedly repeated frequently during the performance of a program to ensure program delivers the benefits plan at the start of the program to summarize project employs change and change management to constrain or control the impact of variability on the outputs of the effort that is a baseline while programs proactively use change management to keep the program itself and program components aligned with the various aspects of the environment in which they are performed so program is is having an eye on changing environment and strategy and accordingly they may have some external changes coming from that way and that would be completely different from what the program was initially initiated for the objectives the benefits for the program might shuffle and change and program may have to readjust as i said portfolio normally kills the projects because pro projects do not have this kind of flexibility they can't change altogether but programs can change considerably because programs have a larger duration and the strategy of the program may change and we can realign things by killing certain projects and doing adding few other things and so program has less likelihood of getting killed from a portfolio then is the program and project complexity i would like to take a break i forgot it 15 minutes ago so let us have a little break for about 10 minutes or so and then we will start again Okay, let me let me quickly go through them again. You have already heard me, so let me show the slides. Okay, first of all, we talked about program and uh, project distinctions. Uh, first of all, is the complexity. As we said, uh, after having discuss, discussing the uncertainty you know, and change, third was complexity. This difference, uh, there is difference between complexity of project and program. Number one, number two. Uh, the complexity is addressed in a separate standard a practice guide to uh, sorry a practice guide of navigating complexity 
that says that there are three types of uh, uh, three factors which makes anything complex the sources of complexity are human behaviors system behaviors and ambiguity ambiguity is you understand uncertainty so human behaviors and system behaviors these three things so these three things are core to the complexity within the program and the project and we will see how they impact it as far as the program is concerned we have got a number of complexities i hope you can see these slides now yes okay good so program complexities we have you see a number of complexities governance complexity stakeholder complexity definition benefit delivery interdependency complexity resource complexity scope complexity change complexity and risk complexity right taking them one by one governance complexity is how difficult it is to govern this program that would come when there are a lot many bodies who are participating in making the policies procedures regulations which have to be followed these are mandatory the governance is mandatory so whatever is given in the governance those rules those procedures they have to be followed they are not at choice of the program manager that he will not follow but if there are so many bodies sponsors management structures number of organizations involved uh, and the decision making processes within the program the complexity of all these things will add to the complexity of the governance and project pro program manager will be more constrained as far as stakeholders are concerned there are three things about the stakeholders number one the last point the, uh, the stakeholder complexity is associated with the number of stakeholders a lot of stakeholders are there so that makes the things complex coming back to the first point arises from differences in need and influences all those stakeholders have different needs and different level of influence so this is one big complexity then stakeholder complexity also focuses on the program pro program team even within the program team the people the team members are also stakeholders and if they are from uh, they are diverse and they are from various departments or various for that matter cultures that also uh, poses a level of complexity you see program because program is a huge entity and program may be spread over various continents various cultures so you may have people speaking different languages and all that and that complexity could add up to the stakeholder complexity then we have definition complexity program brings about change and definition complexity focuses on agreement of future state of stakeholders how the stakeholders will look like how well they will be satisfied how do you define the future of the program other aspects that the program manager should be cognizant of include benefit management and potential competing interest of the stakeholders how the benefits will be managed you see we are not certain about it although we have a plan but we cannot be 100% certain about it this could be a cause of complexity benefit management and potential competing interest the stakeholders right now may not have any conflict but after the benefits will be yielded how the stakeholders will behave that is yet another complexity which cannot be properly defined here benefit delivery could be as i said before this could be uh, yielding of the benefits so many benefits coming out at the same time are many benefits resulting into a consolidated benefit or you know how these benefits are uh, being consolidated and how they would be transited there could be complexity on any one of these areas or even the sustainment of the benefit interdependency complexity is much more complex program manager needs to deal with this a program focuses on interdependencies not only within the program itself the components of the program but sometimes maybe our components our program components are interacting with some outs some other project or program of the same organization or maybe we are interacting with the kind of external entity like another organization or even the government of pakistan or something like that so those things will 
add up to the interdependency complexity. Program managers focus on interdependencies that occur within the program and its related project, but that I said that could be outside of the project, outside of the program, within the organization, or outside even of the organization and can be external to the organization. So these kind of dependencies. Then we have got resource complexity, which is a standard issue in all uh, project and program uh, management things. Resource complexity is always going to be there. We are always going to be constrained of resources. The availability of resources at the required level of capability and capacity, adequate funding, suitable supplies and materials add to the complexity of the program. And these resource concerns need to be addressed within the program. There is a scope complexity. This arises from the difficulty to clearly define the deliverables and benefits. You cannot, you know, you you may be able to define it up to some extent, but that is not exactly the picture which actually is going to emerge. So managing the delivery of the associated benefits beyond the lifespan of the program com program components contribute to the scope of complexity. Pro program components have been have accomplished what they have done now program components uh, they are we are trying to yield deliver uh, their uh, realize their benefits and unify their benefits now what will happen we are not really very sure this uh, these benefits may cause a lot of complexity so your scope may change change complexity arises from different levels of impact of change potentially can cause in an organization Change complexity is low when a program changes the basic operational process model in one or two departments, but can be extremely complex when a program transforms an organization from functional to projectile. But if it is a drastic change, you are bringing altogether a complete change in an organization, then this, uh, this uh, is a cause of complexity. Risk complexity, naturally uncertainty is a problem with us from the very beginning. But risk complexity is when we are dealing with uh, uh, with the, with the uh, risk at the program level. High level of uncertainty due to extended program life cycle. We have a long duration to live, and the uncertainty of the component outcome and their interdependencies may impact our our program. And we all already have our uh, our risk uh, uh, program risk management going on. That itself is very complex. Now, this complexity can be added up by the project risk, which could affect the program. Now, coming over to the project complexity as comparison to the program complexity, what are the project complexities? Project can be complex because of the uniqueness. The biggest point here is we are talking about a unique product because we don't have any experience of doing that thing. So we, whatever we do is learned with is through the progressive elaboration. So what kind of thinking, action, and knowledge has to go in, we may not be very, very sure about it. Although we can do our best, this uniqueness creates uncertainty with regard to time and caustic estimates. We, we may not be accurate. As well as the specifications needed to deliver the desired project output and outcome. Project complexity can be characterized as uh, organizational complexity and our dynamic complexity. As far as organizational complexity is concerned, it focuses on the depth of organizational structure, how deep your organization is structured, as well as the number of organizations units. If there are a lot of many organizations units, then you may be, you know, uh, there are a lot of reporting going on and a lot of uh, interaction going on amongst various units of the organization and our project. So there will be more organizational complexity. It also addresses the number and types of elements and their relationship in the organization. This is the organizational complexity. As far as the dynamic complexity is concerned, that more relates more towards the, uh, the uncertainty side. Dynamic complexity focuses on the project's behavior and how it changes over time. So we did talk about the overall complexity. We, we said there are social uh, individual behaviors and organizational behavior. So basically, this is what the, we are talking here about a project behavior. How the project behavior will change over over time and how uh, this project behavior will you know result in uh, a complexity for the project itself 
So to summarize, there are two complexities for the project, organizational and dynamic, and there are nine complexities for the program, governance complexity, stakeholder complexity, definition complexity, benefit delivery complexity, interdependency complexity, resource complexity, scope complexity, change complexity, and risk complexity. We have talked about them a little, uh, not a very deliberate discussion, but still, I hope you get some idea about these various complexities. So this brings us to the end of this chapter. And if you have any questions here, we can talk about them. Yes, please. Good, sir. Uh, sorry, Shahul, go ahead. <coughs> yes. No, no, carry on, Asham. Um, Asham. So, uh, we, sir, how many total chapters we will have? Now, after this, we have got uh, five major chapters. Five, okay. five, uh, five uh, performance domains, five chapters. But the uh, life cycle chapter is lengthy. It has got uh, okay. initiation, planning. Yeah, initiation, but, uh, no, it's the same five processes which we learned in PMP, but they will be in context of project management, right? Yes, uh, this uh, program management. We will be talking in context of program management, and uh, you may not be able to relate it with the with with the project management. But do not relate it with the project management. In the program management life cycle, we will discuss initiation, planning, execution, quality control, and close. Right? So this is part of one chapter, but this chapter will take a few days to complete. It is not going to be one or two sessions. But all other chapters may be short. Okay. So if you like, I can start the next chapter or we can uh, do it next week. Sir, uh, what about our homework? Like, what do we need to do till till we have one week time? What topic should we cover? I think you should uh, read the next chapter and review the, these these two chapters which we have already done. Review these two okay. chapters. And you see, there were some very major concepts. If you can just make some notes of these concepts, these are the basic concepts. Just like, you know, in PMB, okay, the first three chapters were conceptual in nature. All the rest of the 10 chapters in PMB, okay, are about the knowledge areas, but time and again, you have to turn back to the concept you have studied in the first three chapters. Exactly, these first two chapters are the basis. These are the basic concepts. So keep them at the back of your mind. Make a short summary of all, all the concepts given here. Uh, summarize, uh, make small little notes about these two chapters and then move on and study the first chapter uh, I mean, uh, the first uh, uh, performance domain. You come prepared with that, we will have less question, we will have more understanding. Okay, I am noting. The, what we'll be doing is, now, once, once we are dealing with each uh, performance domain, we will have a test of each domain also. Because exam actually is going to be according to those domains. So we will be testing you for each domain. Is it okay? Okay, okay. Okay, uh, Shalomit. Oh. Okay, sir. We'll, um, uh, what we'll do, we'll go through this, uh, the two chapters, what we have finished, zero as well as one and two. Right. Um, then um, uh, some of the questions also you have given CRC questions, right? But also we'll go through it if anything is there. Or not. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Let's meet, inshallah, next week. Most welcome. Thank you very much and take care. Let's meet to, uh, next week and Khuda Hafiz.